There's just so much AI news every day, so many new tools being released, that it's really hard to keep up with what's going on in AI. So I try to digest everything and then filter it down to only the most interesting, most noteworthy highlights to share with you. So here are the top highlights this week. Moderna announces a partnership with OpenAI aimed at automating their business processes using ChatGPT's enterprise platform, which is built on GPT-4. The collaboration will involve providing access to GPT Enterprise to around 3,000 Moderna employees by the end of the week. By integrating AI into their processes, Moderna hopes to outpace their goal of launching 15 new products within the next five years. Now, ChatGPT Enterprise is an advanced version of ChatGPT, which is specifically designed for business users. It offers enhanced security and privacy. So, for example, the customer's prompts or data are not used for training OpenAI's models. They also offer unlimited high-speed access to GPT-4, plus it has four times longer inputs and memory. So in ChatGPT Enterprise, companies can build their own custom GPT agents, which are designed or fine-tuned for specific tasks. It's very similar to the GPT store. And for Moderna, they can use these agents to perform specific tasks. So for example, one GPT uses years of previous research and medical knowledge to predict the optimal dose of a drug for clinical trials. Dose optimization is a huge challenge, and choosing the wrong dose can result in products being killed in the clinical trial stage. Another GPT clones through swaths of research to draft answers to questions from regulators. What used to be a week-long process can now happen in minutes. Another agent on the drug manufacturing side is used to predict the structure of new enzymes that will enable manufacturing processes with better yield and reduced waste. Now, in this previous video I did, I talked about how Google AlphaFold was being used and has already been used to, for example, discover a vaccine for malaria or discover a cure for liver cancer. Another one of DeepMind's AI projects is Google Genome, which is used to discover millions of new stable materials with deep learning. This can be used to help us discover, for example, new and more efficient battery materials. So with Moderna partnering with OpenAI, one could expect, optimistically, an acceleration in drug discovery using AI. However, the idea of using AI for drug discovery has seen a lot of hype over the years. There are a lot of things that are overhyped in AI right now. So I tweeted this out on March 9th. People overestimate what AI can do in the short term and vastly underestimate what it can do in the long term. So I think in the short term, people are overly optimistic. Like some people are expecting tons of new drug discoveries or cures for cancer. It might not happen that soon, but time will tell. This is definitely a really exciting time to be alive. We're seeing more and more announcements from these AI robot companies, such as Boston Dynamics, Figure AI, and the Tesla Optimus bot, showcasing their improved abilities, such as walking, balancing, doing yoga, sorting objects, and acting autonomously. Now, fully autonomous robots, I think, are still far away from being deployed in real life. But what if we don't need fully autonomous robots? What if, for now, we can just have someone teleoperate it remotely, so perhaps even physical jobs can now be work from home? And that brings me to this clip. So let me know what you think of this clip. Do you think this will be the future of work? And how will this affect global labor dynamics? Next up is Video Gig again. So Adobe has developed this video super resolution model called Video Gig again that can upscale videos up to eight times with rich details using generative AI. The model builds upon the GigaGAN image upscaler, but incorporates additional features to it, such as temporal attention layers, flow-guided propagation modules, high-frequency shuttles, and more. So previous VSR models, VSR just stands for Video Super Resolution, they have difficulty generating results with rich details. And so what's a solution? Well, we could try a better up sampler. And so the best one out there right now is GigaGAN. 
but there are a lot of flaws with it. So the quality isn't really good. It's temporally inconsistent. So what Adobe has done is it has added more features to the original Gigagan model. So it added temporal attention, which improves the temporal consistency over time. And they also added an anti-aliasing feature to improve the quality. And then finally, they've added this high frequency shuttle feature, which increases the quality and sharpens the video even further. So first of all, let me play you some examples. This is really mind blowing. So the left is the original. So original looks like this. And then here is the upscaled model. You can see this is so good. You can see the eyebrows are very sharp. The eye, the pupil, the iris, the eyelashes are all super sharp. You can even see the details of this guy's skin. It's just really good. Here is some syrup being poured on a pancake. And here's the original. You can see super blurry. There's not much detail. After this up sampler, super realistic. Look at that. All right, a few more examples. Here is pouring some sparkling water, I assume, into this glass. And wow, you can even see like the foam and the bubbles in this upsampled version, which you're not able to see here. And then here is a waterfall. You can see in the original image, you can barely make out like the shapes of the moss, the rocks, the leaves. But after processing with this tool, you can see everything is just a lot sharper. You can even see like the exact details of the moss on the rocks. And also the details down here are a lot sharper. Again, here's the before. You can barely see anything. Here's the after. Here's another example showing a face. So this is super blurry. You can barely see any details of this guy's face. But now look at that, like the frames on his glasses, his hair, his beard are just super sharp. And I honestly can't find any flaws with this. Here's another example, super realistic. <clears throat> Very nice. Here's yet another example. You can see this girl remains consistent throughout the entire video. Notice her teeth, her eyes, her nose, her hair. It remains consistent throughout time. Also notice this mole or the multiple moles on her neck, they stay in the same position on her skin. So everything is just very consistent. The only flaw I can point out with this video is if you notice the button at the bottom here, it does kind of change shape over time. But overall, it's really hard to pick out any flaws from this. You can see it also works well with animals. So here's a very macro close-up photo of a honeybee. Here is a horse. Wow, very, very detailed. And what on earth? are these ducks, I assume. Again, very impressive. And here is a swan. Notice the details of the swan, the face, the feathers, the ripples in the water. Everything is just super sharp and very consistent. Here are some cherry blossoms. Again, super nice. And here's a cat. Notice the fur, the eyes of the cat. It's very realistic and very sharp. Here is a hand feeling grass. So again, super sharp. It's hard to find any flaws with these. And there's a few more examples here. I'll link to this paper in the description below so you can check all of these out. But overall, it's really impressive. Now, I got to caveat this with one thing, which is this is only a research preview. They haven't made this available to consumers via their software like Creative Cloud or Premiere Pro yet. This is just a preview. And with all previews, we got to take these examples with a grain of salt. They could be cherry picking these examples for all we know. So that's it for Video Gig again. Just know that this technology exists, but consumers don't have access to this yet. All right, so just yesterday, Rabbit AI hosted their unboxing party in New York City. So this was streamed live, and there, the CEO, Jesse, did a live demo of the Rabbit device. There are so many cool things with it. You can watch the full video on YouTube. And this seems like a legit and very powerful device. Unlike a competitor, the Humane AI pin, which is just being roasted. There are so many negative comments about it. The product just seems really awful and overpriced. Marcus calls it the worst product I have ever reviewed. However, with Jesse's demo of the Rabbit R1, first of all, its response time is a lot faster than the Humane pin. So I'm going to show you um, advanced reasoning with stacked questions. And let's test it out again. Everything, <laughs> everything is alive. I'm not sure if it's gonna work. So okay, hopefully it works. So, who won the 2011 Formula One Drivers Championship? 
while you're at it, who is the designer behind the car that won the championship? So I'm just stacking two questions together. Looking it up now. The 2011 Formula One Drivers' Championship was won by Sebastian Vettel, driving for Red Bull Racing. The designer behind the car that won the championship was Adrian Newey, who has more than 20 Formula One World Championship titles to his name when you combine both the drivers' and constructors' titles. Happy? Okay. Plus, you can automate so many things with it. For example, here, he took a screenshot of just a piece of paper, and it transformed that into an Excel spreadsheet and emailed it to him, all automatically. I want to show you something much more interesting, okay? So let's just point right into this. So let's do something like, for this spreadsheet, transcribe it and swap the color and number columns. Taking a look now. You don't need to point it, by the way. The spreadsheet has been transcribed. Please okay. check your email for the attachment. Wait, what? There's an email. <laughs> Guys, ch ch check your check your watch. Check your watch. Okay. I want to make sure this is not a spam because it's called rabbit. We got spammed a lot, um, and it came with a little nice attachment in a CSV file. Let me just download it. Guys, our one is real. <laughs> How crazy is that? And you can also use it to order food on DoorDash or get it to generate images in Midjourney or basically automate any other workflow that you want it to do. So really impressive. And how cool is this? So at the end, they've released these boxes of rabbits, which people could pick up at the event. And they did this in kind of like this uh, sushi buffet style thing, which I think is pretty cool. And then Jesse later transforms the event into a dance party, and he was DJing the music on stage. If you've watched my previous video on Jesse, you'll know that he's a really avid music producer. He loves music, he loves jamming with all these different synths and music production tools. And what's funny is Marcus just posted this. So he got his hands on an R1 device, so I'm sure very shortly we are going to see his review of this device on YouTube. And the replies are pretty funny. So he already took out this car company. He took out the Humane pin. Right now he's knocking on the door of the Rabbit R1. But honestly, I think the Rabbit is legit. Like I have no connections with Jesse. I don't know him personally. But from what he demoed at the NYC event, everything that he claims the Rabbit can do seems very legit. So instead of calling it the worst product ever, which is what he called the Humane AI pin, I think the Rabbit R1 would actually get a good review from Marcus. This is just a photoshopped parody from someone else on Twitter. Now, the folks at this event, of course, got their hands on one, but I believe batch one isn't fully out yet. So only a select number of people in the world have their hands on an R1 device right now. All right, next up, if you've been following my channel, you'll probably know that it's really easy to jailbreak the biggest chatbots out there. This includes Llama, GPT, Gemini, and basically hack it and get it to produce illegal content, for example, Teach me how to build a bomb. There are just so many ways to jailbreak these chatbots, it's really hard to make a chatbot hack proof. So here, scientists have developed a new AI training approach called Curiosity Driven Red Teaming. It uses one AI to generate harmful prompts to train another AI, such as a chatbot, to avoid these toxic and dangerous responses. So by incentivizing this CRT model to create a wide range of harmful prompts and rewarding its curiosity when it does produce these toxic harmful responses, researchers have found that this system can generate a lot more diverse and creative and harmful prompts than traditional human-led methods. And so all these harmful prompts can then be fed into another AI like ChatGPT to train it to be more secure and avoid these jailbreaking attempts. And then final article, this coffee roastery launched an AI-generated blend. 
Now, I do think this is just more of a marketing stunt more than anything, but it's worth a share anyways, because I'm pretty obsessed with coffee. So it's nothing groundbreaking or impressive. What they did was they basically gave descriptions of all our coffee types and their flavors to AI and instructed it to create a new exciting blend. So they leveraged models akin to ChatGPT and Copilot, and the AI was tasked with creating a blend that would ideally suit enthusiasts' tastes. So the guy was surprised that AI chose a weird blend out of four different types of coffee beans rather than the usual two or three types, which allows distinction in taste between flavors from different origins. However, after blind testing, coffee experts agreed that the blend was perfect. There was no need for human adjustments. So I'm actually quite interested in trying this out. Again, this is nothing revolutionary. They basically just fed descriptions of their coffee types and flavors to a chatbot. But in any case, this shows you another really creative way to use AI to design something. So those are all the most interesting and noteworthy items in AI in the past few days. This is the first time I'm testing out this rapid fire format. So if you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments below and remember to like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.